Number three, okay? What is the opposite of everything we're doing now? Opposite. So let me give you a quick example that we're going to use an illustration for this training illustration. Let's use restaurants, right? The, and, and, and when you owned a restaurant, people came to you to eat. That was a hallmark of the restaurant. People came to you, right? Now the restaurants were physically closed, and now the restaurants had to do the opposite of what they normally did. So normally people would come to you. Now the restaurant needed to come to them, wherever they are, their home, their place of business, whatever it was. That was the opposite of what they did. And it was interesting because most of the restaurants that the vast majority of the people came in, right, the, you know, the people came to them, didn't really have a strong infrastructure of how to go out. Maybe some of them had some relationship with Uber Eats or DoorDash or Grubhub or any one of these online services, but it was almost kind of like an afterthought. Like, yeah, we do it, but that's so, you know, responsible. If you look at a Chili's or any of the national, uh, you know, the national brands, you're talking single digits of actual carryouts as compared to the people that eat there. So if they put through a thousand meals on a Friday night, you might have, you know, probably less than, a, less than 10 or 20 or 30, but a relatively single digit percentage that actually is the, is the carryout in the normal way. But keeping in mind, a lot of these things couldn't even do carryout. You physically couldn't go to the restaurant. You had to get the Uber Eats or the DoorDash or the Grubhub, so you couldn't physically go there. You'd have to order online, and then they would bring it to you. But it was interesting because I've got many restaurants that are my clients, and, and we were talking about the pivot, right? And they're calling like, oh, my God, what do we do? How do I keep in business now when I'm facing, you know, single digits of what I did last week? Last week I did, you know, 100 people on a Friday night. Right? Now we did 10 carryouts. How do I survive? But you know what the real issue was? And I found this to be fascinating. They were not geared up with the carryout things they needed, the carryout stuff they needed. They didn't have lots of styrofoam you know, little clamshell things. They didn't have lots of cups and lids and napkins and plastic knives and plastic forks. Why? Because the carryout was such a small portion of their business they really never thought that seriously about it. Therefore, they never really kept a huge stockpile. Now everyone was scrambling to get the same thing. When everybody closed out, now everybody needs lots of clamshell styrofoams and cups and paper this and plastic that and plastic knives and forks and napkins and all of the carry-out type bags, right? All the things that they would normally use in carry-out. Why? Because now they're forced to do the opposite of what they did, right? Think of it in-person meetings, networking groups, right? Where, where the value of the networking group was everybody coming together in a room, right? Sharing a beer, sharing a cup of coffee, sitting around the same conference table. That was the value of the networking group by nature of what it is, the idea of bringing people together. Now, that's the opposite, right? Now, they're no longer together. Now, they're apart, right? The opposite of what they do. So when you sit down and when you start kind of overlaying your business with this pivot in mind, you have to start thinking about what is going to be the opposite of whatever I'm doing now. If I'm only doing stuff online, well, what happens if online's not available to me? Well, then your pivot is face-to-face. -face. Well, what if I'm doing everything face-to-face -face and nothing online? Fine, then your pivot might be to go back online. Right? Maybe you, maybe you have a magazine where nobody's developing magazines and now your pivot is going to be online. What if you're online and that hasn't happened? Now your pivot might be a paper magazine. But the idea of number three is, is that there is going to be a preparation necessary for whatever the opposite of what you're doing now. So there's a very good chance that the restaurants that are still functioning and still manage to hang on probably have a stockpile of styrofoam clamshells and plastic cups and plastic bowls and, and you know, paper this and plastic this and plastic knife and forth. They probably have 10 times more than they've ever had. Why? Because they were forced to function in an operational way. Moving forward, there's probably a pretty good chance that they're going to say, you know what? Whereas normally we kept 10 of those styrofoam clamshells, let's keep 100 or 200 or 500. Why? Because if it happens once, 
it could happen again. But now we're prepared. Now we know that if we have to pivot from one way to another, the opposite is going to now hold true.